looking now at the expansion of 1 plus x or to the power of n. So combinations and Pascal's triangles are closely related as Supposed to mean related to Pascal's triangle. I think that's a typo somewhere. Okay, so using the above properties of combination, we can rewrite Pascal's triangle as the following: zero, c zero. Yep. Okay, so we can get all those coefficients that we looked at in Pascal's triangle by following this pattern. Okay, so that top left number becomes the number in the row, and then as you go from left to right, you go from 0, 1 through to um, the row number, uh, the, n, the value of n, sorry. So 2c0, 2c1, and 2c2. Okay, so I think the pattern there is uh, where, what numbers you put where. Okay, will be fairly obvious. So we've got um, n c zero, n c one, n c k, n c k take away one, n c of n take away one and n c of n. All right, we'll get back to those definitions when I have another look at what I need to do there. Okay, so we now have a generalised formula for the expansion of 1 plus x to the power of m. Okay, and missingly is what I need to do in the proof. So I'll show you that when I come back to it. So. So, yeah. That's probably where the error is. <laughs> Good. That might be where it is. Uh, I'll double check that and uh, finish that up next lesson. Alright, so we now have a generalised formula. So, 1 plus x to the power of n. Okay, so when we expand it, we go n c0 plus n c1 x n c2 x squared plus dot 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 plus n c k of x to the power of k whatever the value for k is okay so n C of n take away 1 of x to the n take away 1 plus n c n x to the n. Okay, so we can follow this pattern. And this doesn't rely on you setting out Pascal's triangle to get to the uh, where the row where n equals 10. Okay, so we can set up in this similar nature here to do the expansion. Now remember your other notation, so you've got n c of 0, we can write that as n 0. So we can write the expansion writing that instead of these, okay, which I've, I've um, alternated how I wanted to do. Just make sure you don't, you've got the tendency to put a fraction bar there because it's pretty used to writing a fraction. Okay, so you're not writing a fraction, you're writing a alternate method of combination. Okay, and we'll look at the sigma sums notation in a future lesson as well. <coughs> so the expansion of 1 plus x to the power of n has the following condition. So the sum of the coefficients of each row, so we've already established this in Pascal's triangle, is 2 to the power of m. Okay, in each row there are n plus 1 terms. Okay, so in row 0 we have one term, 
In row 1 we have 2 terms. Row 2 we have 3 terms. So each row has m plus 1 terms in it. Okay, and the important one for the future lesson, so the k plus 1 term is going to be n c k x to the power of k. Alright, so just getting that in your head now because that that point there itself will lead to this, uh, has led to the confusion in the path. We'll look at that in a moment. Okay, so what that's saying is the um, third term, for example, k needs to be 2. Yes? Yeah? Okay, so if I want the third term, I need k is 2, so there needs to be nc2x to the power of 2. Alright, if I need the tenth term, k needs to be 9, and I need to do nc9x to the power of 9. Hey. So you don't need a triangle, you can just go to whatever line you want. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying, so instead of going through that triangle, get the expansion, okay, we can use your combination to work, and I'll show you how that works once I've cleared up that proof from before. All right, a couple of questions, and then we'll finish up a um, bit early this morning. Well, a little bit. Okay, so example, so for one, okay, so one plus x to the power of five. Okay, so first we need to expand that product. Okay, so your page now, page 31. So, 1 plus x to the power of 5. So, this is n, whatever the power is for the binomial. Okay, 5, c, 0. Okay, and really it is x to the power of 0. Okay, and we do x to the power of k. Plus, 5, c, 1, x to the 1. So, whatever the number value for r the same is on the power of your x there. Okay, so that's what I was saying before for the k plus 1 term is nck x to the power of k. So if you want the third term Okay, k need to be 2. Okay, so k is 2 x squared for your third term. Alright, so instead of remembering or working through Pascal's triangle, you just put um, the 5c0s through to 5c5s, do those calculations, and that will be your coefficients needed for that. Okay, and those calculations will be. So I'm thinking the proof is N C K is equal to plus one, not minus one. So I see what you I see where you were going with the whole yeah. C thing, because it's not mine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking I'll worked out where my error is for the for the proof. And we'll have a look at that next lesson once I'll work it out. Alright. Double I, what is the sum of the coefficients? Okay, so in other words, 1 plus 5 plus 10 plus 10 plus 5 plus 1. Okay, so the sum is going to be 2 to the power of 5. So 2 to the power of n is the sum of the coefficient from the previous page. Okay, this of course, this formula works when it is coefficient of 1 in both the terms inside the bracket. Okay, so we still have limitation and we are still looking at the general expansion of an A plus B. 
Back. And one, one, two, four, eight, sixteen. Zero. Zero eights, yeah. Two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty. Yeah. Start zero, not one. Back. Knew there was something wrong there straight away when I wrote it. <coughs> so what's the coefficient of x cubed? So we have k is 3 because that's the coefficient here. That's, hang on. And 2. 2, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It gets, can get a bit confusing. So we need n, hang on, not the third term, just the coefficient of. Third term. Yeah, that was right. We're not looking for the term specifically, we're just after the coefficient of a specific term. Okay? So, k is 3. So, instead of doing that expansion and finding where x cubed is, we can just go um, 5c3. Okay? So, we really just need to do n c k to get that coefficient. Okay? 5, say 3, is 10. Okay, so in other words, how many ways can groups of 3 be formed by selecting 5 people? Okay, 10 ways. That can be done. Right. How many terms are there? n plus 1 terms, okay, for your expansion, that's on the previous page as well, okay, so whatever the power is, add 1, okay, so 5 plus 1, 6 terms, okay, so we don't need to do the expansion, okay, you can just use the concept of the formulas there. Spend that one because I want you to use the concept of the other principles of sum of coefficients, how many terms, and etc. etc. All right, part I what is the sum of the coefficient? Okay, so the sum of the coefficient formula is 2 to the power of n, where the coefficients are 1. Okay, so 2. The power of 10, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 120, 5, 12. Power. Two four eight sixteen thirty two sixty four hundred twenty eight two fifty six five twelve seven twenty four. Hmm. Have you ever got 2048? <laughs> oh, it's addictive. <laughs> it's a good way to waste your time. Uh, what's the coefficient of x cubed? Okay, so instead of doing the expansion, we need to find the coefficient of x cubed. Yep, so nc of k. So 10, 3, 3. 
120. Well, I guess so, because if the fourth term is 120, I'm guessing it's all going to add up pretty quick to 1,024. Could you have, you have 11 terms you need to work out? Oh, look at that. I've just told you the answer for part three. How many times? <laughs> N plus one, so 10 plus one, so 11 terms. All right, so exercise 10.1 is a review of the um, combinations. Okay, and this work is 10.2. Okay, we didn't really finish it anyway. Apologies. Anyway.